All right, we're going to call our finance committee meeting uh, to order. Um, and we would have our clerk take roll. Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Marcy? Here. Mrs. Jewin? Here. Motion to approve the agenda and the minutes of April 2nd, 2018 is proposed. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, we do have an agenda. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes, sir. Motion to approve the following travel requests. Yes. Chris Ferguson, Fire Marshal, investigation of gas and electric appliance fires in Benton Harbor, Michigan, April 23rd to 27th of this year with amount not to exceed $1,328. And Michelle Wiedner, our Chief Financial Officer, Extraordinaire, Government Finance Officers Association Annual Conference in St. Louis, Missouri, May 6th through 9th, amount not to exceed $1,670. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion passes. Sharon, do you just want me to take the other ones too? Yes, please. I can't read it. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, make the following motion to approve the pre authorizations to expend over $1,000. First is community development with Mount and estimated shipping and handling $1,465 for a purchase of smoke detectors for a healthy homes program pursuant to healthy homes grant. Next is uh, the garage uh, department with a Mount and estimated shipping and handling of $3,060 with $100 shipping and handling for the purchase of a 2009 Dodge engine. Uh, next is from Leisure Services with the amount and estimated shipping and handling of $1,209.60 plus $100 for shipping and handling for interlocking rubber flooring for the powerhouse studio at the Sportsplex. Next is leisure services as well with the amount and estimated shipping and handling not to exceed $9,700 for new curtains and repairing of metal bars in the field turf. And next is from Mayor Quentin Hart with the amount and estimated shipping and handling of $1,846 for advertisement, paper online, recognizing John Deere's contribution to the Waterloo economy and to promote housing incentives in Waterloo. Next is from the police department with the mountain estimated shipping handling of $1,575 for upgrading the module on annual license software maintenance and support for the ICAC internet evidence finder. And next is from the police department as well with the mountain estimated shipping handling of $1,740.02 uh, to purchase emergency lights for two Harley Davidson motorcycles. Uh, next is from the sewer department with the amount and estimated shipping and handling of $1,500 for two gas meters and control panel used as is at the lagoon. And next is from the sewer department as well with the amount and estimated shipping and handling of $4,977 to replace Moigno parts rotor and stator for digester sludge transfer pump. And finally is from sanitation with the amount and estimated shipping and handling of $7,326.52 plus $200 shipping and handling for belts, roller, fittings, bolts, plates, and other miscellaneous parts number 155N03 screener. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. I have one question, I guess, for Sandy on the, the Dodge uh, engine for the 2009. Is that, um, can you kind of give us an idea of how old that, or, or what the situation is while we're putting a new motor in such an old vehicle? Hi. Sandy Grieco, uh, interim public works director. Um, this is for a police department car. You might be able to help me on this a little bit. But it is um, a car that's in really, really good shape. It's, and I'm not sure if Tri-County uses it or um, detectives use it, but it's an unmarked car. Um, the body and everything's in really, really good shape. It just needs a new engine, so. 
So in your opinion, it's, it's well worth the investment? Yes, we've looked it over and okay. the mechanics have looked it over. It's in really good shape otherwise. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That is, motion passes. Uh, the, um, there's a budget line items to be amended uh, to approve the budget for the Jefferson and Commercial Streetscape design funded with $63,300 in gaming funds as approved by the Wiley Development Corporation submitted by planning. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that passes. And then lastly, we have the bills payment for April 9th, 2018 uh, in the amount of $806,994 83 cents. So that's 806 comma 994.83. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. That passes. Aye. We are adjourned. It welcome everyone to this evening's city council meeting. Uh, these microphones are sensitive. Normally you can't hear us. Well, let me take that back. Sometimes if you don't speak directly into them, you can't hear us, but I can get way back here and you can hear. But anyway, welcome. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Shim? Here. Mrs. Klein? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mrs. Jewin? Here. All right, thank you. Uh, this evening, um, uh, Mr. Juwan will be um, uh, uh, here via telephone, and uh, Mr. Schmidt will take over uh, in, as pro tem for Mrs. Juwan this evening. So if you would please rise for the uh, moment of silence. All right, thank you. Uh, this evening's pledge will be led by City Clerk Kelly Felker. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, make a motion to accept the agenda as proposed. Well, second. Minutes, I'm assuming. No, sir. And also the minutes of the April 2nd, 2018 regular session as proposed. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We have an agenda. All right. So first on our agenda this evening is a proclamation declaring uh, days of remembrance, and may I please call up Stephen Gaze, Dr. Gaze, right? <laughs> All right, I'm looking out in the audience to see if I see any bow ties as well. <laughs> All right, uh, City of Waterloo, Iowa Proclamation. Whereas the Holocaust was the state-sponsored systematic persecution and annihilation of European Jewry by Nazi Germany and its collaborators between 1933 and 1945, and whereas Jews were the primary victims, six million were murdered, Roma gypsies, people with disabilities, and Poles were also targeted for destruction or dissemination of racial, ethnic, or national reasons. And millions more, including homosexuals, Jehovah Witnesses, Soviet prisoners of war, and political dissidents also suffered grievous oppression and death under Nazi tyranny. 
And whereas the history of the Holocaust, offer, Holocaust offers an opportunity to reflect on the moral responsibilities of individual society and governments, and whereas we, the people of the city of Waterloo, should always remember, remember the terrible events of the Holocaust and remain vigilant against hatred, persecution, and tyranny. And whereas we, the people of the city of Waterloo, should actively rededicate ourselves to the principles of individual freedom in a just society. And whereas the days of remembrance have been set aside for the people of the city of Waterloo to remember the victims of the Holocaust, as well as to reflect on the need for respect for all peoples. And whereas pursuant to the act of Congress, Public Law 96-388, October 7th, 1980, the United States Holocaust Memorial Council designates the days of remembrance of the victims of the Holocaust to be Sunday, April 8th, through Sunday, April 15th, including the days of remembrance known as Yom HaShoah, Thursday, April 12, 2018. I, therefore, Quentin Hart, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, do hereby proclaim the week of Sunday, April 8th, through Sunday, April 15th, as days of remembrance. So, Doctor, please tell us about this. Thank you, Mayor Hart, members of the City Council, other officials, uh, this will be the 12th consecutive year that we commemorate the Holocaust, and I want to thank the City of Waterloo for issuing this proclamation. It means a lot when governments as well as groups and individuals recognize this event, which I think speaks to us today even more than at any time in the past. I want to invite you on behalf of the organizers of this year's Days of Remembrance uh, to a short remembrance ceremony at 6 mm. o'clock on Wednesday at the Hearst Center for the Arts in Cedar Falls. Councilman Amos will be representing the City of Waterloo uh, at that event. And then at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a concert featuring UNI School of Music faculty and guest artists, a concert uh, about the music of the Holocaust and commemorating the 75th anniversary of a milestone event in that 12-year tragedy, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. You're all cordially invited. The events are free and open to the public, and there's a reception following the concert. So let me just thank you again, Mayor Hart, for your support of our efforts to remember the Holocaust. Sir, thank you so much, and thank you for your efforts and remembrance. All right, we'll see you this weekend. Thank you, there. All right, and now we have a recognition of swearing in uh, of our new police officer, Nikolai Payne. So, uh, Chief. Uh, this sound system is a lot better. It seems like it's gotten better since your State of the City address. So good job, Mayor. Uh, Nikolai Payne. Nikolai Payne is probably uh, the 50th or 60th candidate that I've been involved in uh, hiring at a police department. He has his wife, Christy, here with him. His parents, Danny and Mona, are here, as well as his sister, Nadia. Uh, Nikolai's been basically in construction for the past 10 years. He was working as an equipment operator, born and raised in Waterloo, currently lives in Waterloo. Uh, he was also a youth minister. Uh, we've had an officer leave to be a minister. We've never had a minister come be a police officer for us. <laughs> Uh, he's one of our reserves, has been a reserve since 2015. When I was looking at his background investigation, we do very thorough background investigations on our candidates. I've never seen such a perfect one. The guy doesn't even have a speeding ticket, which amazes me. No underage drinking. It seems like his only contact with law enforcement has been when he's been with his wife when she's been pulled over for speeding. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're... <laughs> So we're happy to bring Nikolai on board. Uh, he's been in Romania doing mission work. He's been overseas doing mission work in other countries, teaching youth English. Uh, so a very impressive candidate that's come to work for us, Mayor. Uh, so Nikolai, we'll have the mayor swear you in now. 
Uh, after you're sworn in, I will present your badge to Christy, uh, and Christy will present the badge with you. And I neglected to mention they just had a child, Jackson. Jackson was born prematurely, uh, was hit and miss for a while, but uh, uh, he's, he's practically walking now. So congratulations. All right, thank you. I can't even follow that one up. <laughs> uh, but you've been doing construction. Now it's your opportunity to, to build community. So glad. So please repeat after me. Uh, I, I, now state your name, Nicola do solemnly swear, solemnly swear I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And I will faithfully and impartially to the best of my ability discharge all the duties of the position of police officer in the city of Waterloo, Blackhawk County, Iowa, as now or hereafter required by law. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Um, now we have oral presentations, and we have a couple people already registered to speak, and we have uh, Mr. Bruce Kasner uh, to speak on violent crimes and gun control. Good evening, Mayor and <coughs> Council Members and viewing audience. Hope and pray everybody can hear me. You understand what I'm saying, trying to say tonight. That's one of part of my disability is I can barely talk. English is a foreign language for me. I was born here. But anyhow, I'm talking, speaking tonight on a subject that's near and dear to my heart or tongue in cheek, my head. And that's the gun, gun violence control issues. According to the Law Center for Prevention of Gun Violence, Gif Kathy Gifford's group, the total annual cost of U.S. gun violence is over $220 billion each every year. And that affects over 100,000 Americans year, per year. Wyoming is the highest has the highest rate of gun violence than gun deaths. It costs Wyoming $1,400 per year. That's just too much. One life is too much to waste, expand, and lose. Somebody affects everybody, whether you get shot or not. It affects the family members, affects friends and loved ones. I'm sure each and every person out there has been touched or affected directly or indirectly by gun crime violence. And it's not, not fun, trust me. I believe that we need more stronger, stricter sensing legislation to control the violence. If you do gun crime, whether you preserved the weapon or not, whether you just carried in the crime in your pocket. I think if you're conviction, you should receive full time, hard time, max time. No more silly slaps on the wrist, six months you're in and out. I mean, the, I don't want to forgive the man who shot me in the head, but right now he's living pretty much a life of these, which I had to fight and scrap and and be thankful for every blessing I get. Because first for me, God has allowed me to be too blessed to be stressed. Thank you for my time. I hope and pray that we can get some 
legislation enacted to really make this a possibility. Right. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Bruce, and thank you so much for being a, a testimony uh, and, and speaking your voice. So thank you so much. Thanks, um, I think we have uh, Mr. Eilers, you're up. <coughs> Wayne Eiler, 1205 and a half Bishop Street. I've been here three times on this uh, turnoff valve on 179 West 18th Street. The water turnoff was put in approximately four years ago, brand new. The city water company also said that they tested it twice um, before they went out there and all of a sudden said it don't work. Well, the water turnoff was put in on a bicycle trail that runs in front of all the properties up and down uh, West 18th. That is maintained by the city. It's plowed by the city and it's maintained by the city. And the Waterloo Waterworks stated that it worked just fine. Then all of a sudden, in January, the freezing part of the year, it don't work. So to come to any kind of conclusion, the people that plowed the bicycle trail hit the water turnoff because the city of Waterloo said it worked a month before that. And also, Matt, that's the manager at the Waterloo Waterworks, said that... Uh, very, very seldom does it ever happen that a water turnoff goes bad before 20 years. And this one's only four to five years old. And I got a letter from the city attorney said pay the bill or else it'll be attached to my taxes. Well, the other thing that uh, Mary at the water company said, well, we'll just shut your water off. I didn't have any delinquent water bills. I had what they call a deposit that they all of a sudden required I pay a deposit, then a delinquent charge, and all of a sudden now they forget that or they're gonna forgive it, is what Matt said. Well, the problem is not mine at all. And as I stated last time, I don't want to go to court and fight the city, and I don't think the court want to go to fight me. So one of the city, either their plow truck hit it or it froze up, and they required it redone in the middle of February, but they never cut it off, even after they put it in. They never cut the guy's utility off. So by doing that, I don't know if it's a regular fee or an additional fee in the middle of January in a storm. So it's not my responsibility to replace a water uh, turnoff valve that was good. We put it in. I had it put in brand new four to five years before that. And everything worked a month or two before that. The city of Waterloo Waterworks said they tested it and worked. All of a sudden, it didn't work. So I'm asking the city to get together with whatever they're doing, because I'm not paying the bill, $1,600, to replace a water turnoff that either the city employees screwed it up by plowing over it, hitting it, or it froze up and they decided to dig it up in the middle of the winter. But it worked OK the month before that. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, is there anyone else that would like to um, address the council on non-agenda related items? <coughs> David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Mayor and council, um, I continue to hear that we need a better quality of life in the Cedar Valley and it's usually connected with whitewater or some other recreational idea. However, living in the Cedar Valley, retired, my quality of life goes down 
due to people saying we need these things to attract and retain folks. I'm not seeing that attraction and retention just because there's some sort of other amenity that's a recreational idea. We retain people in this community by giving them a quality of life, because we keep hearing that, of having a good tax base, a lower tax base, and a lower um, living expense to live in this town. Recreation, to my thinking, does not bring people to town and retain them here, but yet we keep spending millions of dollars on bike trails, on uh, whitewater, that's still, I'm sure, somewhere on somebody's agenda. Um, but that quality of life is not something that, that is in the minds of those retired people out there who are living on fixed incomes, who are possibly thinking about having to sell their house to be able to continue to live, and bike trails that we keep spending a lot of money on that, okay, so you can ride from here to Cedar Rapids, Iowa City. How many people in this town, it's a retirement community as well as, as a, because we aren't getting these attractions to these other younger people. You gotta take care of those people too. Those people are the ones that pay the bill, that tow the trailer, that live here and can't afford to move. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Forrest Dillaloo, 1725 Huntington Road. I would like to talk about potholes and pothole repair tonight. A week ago Monday, uh, one of the city trucks went by my house for the second time with uh, pothole material in the back. And I had saw on TV them filling a pothole and they swept it out with a broom, a brand new broom is what was on TV, and uh, then filling a pothole. So I thought I would follow this truck. I followed it around mostly because I'd been by my house twice and thought they must have some massive holes in the neighborhood. But we went up to Central Heights and we drove around Central Heights and there weren't any holes that they filled in that area. Then they went back across Ainsboro and ended up on Stratford. The first hole that they filled on Stratford, they got out of the truck, one of them, went to the back of the truck, there was no broom. He walked over to the hole, scraped all of the excess material that had bounced out of that hole into the hole, and then put a couple shovelfuls on top and then smoothed it with the back of the shovel. Now I really don't think that is the way I would want holes repaired. At my house one time, I took my leaf blower and I blowed out a place, and then the city put patch material in there, and that is still there today and looking good. It's been over a year. I think if we work at this harder, we put money in there every year. Local option tax goes in there every year, and our streets, to me, are no better than they were when we started doing this. We need to do it smarter and wiser. Leaf blowers, clean the hole out. You wouldn't eat an Oreo cookie and then tell your dentist to fill your tooth. And that's kind of what this is. And uh, I really think if we get smarter, I, today I drove around Fletcher, Ainsboro, and Katowski Drive. All of that pothole filler that's in those halls is bouncing out because there's water in there and it splashes it out. It's all around the hole. We could save a lot of material if we scrape it back in and throw a half a shovel full on top, but it's not going to stay. It's a waste of taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Going a second time. Mr. I make a motion to. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Excuse yes, me. Sir. Um, I just I received a call this week from um, a constituent, and I know they are watching this evening. Um, so they were asking about fireworks and where we're at with that, and. Um, I was just wondering if maybe we could get that on the agenda sometime soon rather than waiting. The, the fourth is coming up here. And I know uh, Mr. Amos spoke with me about it previously. So if we can have something soon on that, that would be nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to uh, 
receive and file oral comments and uh, close that portion of the meeting. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The part is closed. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. I, I didn't hear you call for council comment. Um, can I make, still make a brief comment? Um, you are via phone, so um, I'll allow a brief comment. Thank you. I just wanted to apologize for my absence, but to tell people there's good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is that I don't have pink eye, so Councilman Schmidt doesn't need to worry about catching that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> or me. But secondly, the, the bad news is that rather than pink eye, I have an ulcerated cornea. And my doctor and I are working very vigilantly to try to avoid having to have a cornea transplant. But in the meantime, I can't read and I'm not supposed to drive at night. So again, I apologize um, and, and wish I could be with you. All right, and, and we miss your physical presence. Um, Thank you. you. You keep Steve and I, I mean, Councilman Schmidt and I separated. You're the glue that keeps us together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. So we had a motion. You want to you wanna say aye so we can, I don't think we got your yes. vote on that. So. Aye. All right. Thank aye. you. So we're going to make a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda, and that's items 1A through B7. Yep. And also within that, uh, we'll pay the bills, I assume, led by uh, Vice Chairman Jacobs, if he's the Vice Chair, I think. Yes, we have a bills payment tonight of $806,994.83. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Second. That motion has been made with the second, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, is there any way that we can take item... Um, item B3, B4, and B5 and talk about those separately? Yes, sir. So we'll separate those. What do we do? So it's... So... So those will be, so we'll take all the other ones and then we go what, uh, three, we'll four, five in its entirety. It'd be three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. we could, I mean, we could talk about all three of them together if, if you want to, if you don't have to do that. Okay. That's, that's fine. All right. So um, on the, we have a motion and a second for the other portions of the consent agenda. Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. Mr. Morrison. Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. All right. Three, four, and five. Your questions? Um, Mr. Mayor, can we just get some overview on what what these positions looks we like? Sh we should do a motion in a second oh, to um, approve them first. Can I, uh, I move to consider what, B, B3, B4, by B5, right? Yeah. Yep. Or do you need me to read them too? Um, I think B3, B4, B5 will suffice. Okay. All right. That motion has been made. Can I get a second? Mr. Point yes, of sir. order. Mr. Oh, well, I don't. What is the motion? Uh, is to, it to consider or to recommend approval or what? So to be spot on, just if you could just read the three. Sure. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, B3 is a recommendation of appointment of. Tom Meyer from the current civil service list to the position of street foreman at the Public Works Street Department, effective April 10th, 2018. B4 is recommendation of appointment of Michael um, Gino, I think, from the current civil service list to the position of street foreman at the Public Works Street Department, effective April 10th. I apologize if I um, messed that last name up. And B5 is recommendation of appointment of Forrest Graves from the civil service list to the position of collection systems foreman at the Waste Management Department, effective April 10th, 2018. Can we get a second? Second. That motion's been made with the second. Um, um, Sandy, for the first two, can you give overviews? 
Sandy Grico, Interim Public Works Director. Um, these two positions, <clears throat> excuse me, are to fill vacancies from retirements. Uh, Mark Lane and Bob Morlock both retired um, as foreman from the street department. Uh, Mark Lane retired in December, Bob Morlock retired in January. Um, these positions have been filled by temporary foremen. Actually, Tom Meyer has filled Mark Lane's position since December. And um, the other one has been a uh, fill-in um, by seniority. And we have, they've taken um, a test and they, out of seven, they all placed on the civil service list. And we have picked the top two candidates. Okay. And how are these paid for? These are all road use tax. Thank you. That was my next question. Sorry about tax. Yes, ma'am. As far as the discussion goes, um, I would like to see us hit the pause button again because of two things. First, we don't know about the backfill money yet, but we're so close to knowing. And secondly, because we are doing some restructuring work for the city of Waterloo and retirements are going to play heavily in that. And I would like to see where we're headed with that before we fill all of these positions. So I would like to see us pause and delay this until perhaps the fiscal year. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. To that, um, maybe um, Michelle can explain that. The backfill won't affect road use tax fund though, will it? No. So the, 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 that was the same. So what we have right now, we're, we're waiting and I had to make the unpopular decision um, if there is a position that is a general funded position that does not have some of time stake, like right now uh, we filled a police position because the only way to get into that academy was it needed to be done pretty much right now. So that's why we had a police general fund position on the agenda. Every other general fund position I put on hold to wait and see what's going to happen with the, with the backfill. Um, and that is at several police, that's several fire positions, um, yeah, finance positions. There are positions that we, we absolutely need, but um, those are on hold right now. And those are all general fund positions which are impacted um, by the backfield or would be. Will any of these positions be impacted by restructuring? Um, they won't be impacted by restructuring. Right now, that task force has been meeting um, and we've taken a look at uh, this particular department. Um, next, we move on to another department, but the hope is that everything is a continuous flow. So um, right now, not, this is, how many, how many people do this, do they oversee? Um, there's, I believe, 31 um, employees that are out on the street, including the two foremen. So one takes one section, one takes another section of the city. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not bringing anything, bringing anything before you right now, before we find out what's going on with the backfill or does it make sense as we move forward. Okay. All right, so just, just a couple questions on the position. So these positions, as the street foreman, they have, they have some other frontline employees underneath them that they supervise and they super, basically these two gentlemen would supervise one half of the city. Right, they have EO2s so. and EO1s. Okay, so whether that's north, south, east, west, what, whatever, they, right. they're each taking half of the city and supervising any any issues that might come up while while their employees are out working or anything like that, right? I mean, yes. that, that sort of thing. Okay. Mr. Mayor, yes, if I sir. could just follow up on the backfill. Is there an estimate that you've been told of when we can expect um, um, any kind of estimate of uh, resolution to this quandary? Uh, it obviously affects many more cities than just Waterloo, but as far as we're speaking, is there an idea of kind of you know where we're going to be able to nail this down? And I mean, I know it's not anything that we've done, but maybe you might should be able to shed some more light on that for us? The excellent question. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have, we have um, for those that don't know, we have two conference calls uh, scheduled every week, one with the Iowa League of Cities, the other one with the Metro Coalition of Cities. And this has been the conversation from everyone. They've gone to say that uh, there may not be an impact in 
2019 to there may be a partial impact. Um, I'm, I think they voted. I thought, I thought they would be finished about the 20th of April, but I'm hearing that may end up be around the 1st of May potentially. So that's why we're kind of holding back the general fund position so we could adhere to whatever their decisions are. Um, but yeah, I, I wish I knew too. I, I'm in constant communication uh, with our legislators on either side of the table. So yes, ma'am. Um, I, I have a question, not necessarily about the backfill, but about the restructuring meetings that are going on. I would love to be part of that in a work session so that we could ha have all eyes on it right. and, and talk it over amongst the council as a whole. Right. I would love to see that happen. Okay. All right. We'll talk about it. Yes. Uh, Sandy, those two positions, so those two uh, fellows, Mr. Meyer, Mr. Genau, those are both current city employees, and they're being promoted within that department. Is that correct? Yes. Tom has been with, <clears throat> excuse me, Tom has been with the city for 25 years, and Mike has with, for 10. Okay. And then are replacing them uh, in the front line, is that process in place that we already hired those people or where, what's the status of that? Just out of curiosity. No, I'll be coming back to you to replace EO2 positions. Okay, thank you. What, what was EO, what's EO2? Equipment operator. Equipment two. operator. Yes. Okay, thank you. <coughs> All right, thank you. Uh, number five, Mr. Homebrecker. So just to be clear, those are non-general fund positions. Non-general fund. So everyone's. And number five is as well. Steve Holmbrecker, Waste Management Services Director. Similar to Sandy, this is a foreman position. It is a promotion from the uh, sewer maintenance <clears throat> employees just below this level, below this person. It is the filling of a retirement, a more recent retirement, and um, we're hiring from the civil service list. It is an enterprise funded. In this case, it's the storm sewer, not the sanitary. This is one of the seven positions that's funded by the storm sewer. So I don't... I don't know if there's any other questions, but it's very similar to what Sandy explained. There's a fill in right now, and there will be until this is filled in some fashion, which I expect to, <clears throat> excuse me, move on. Um, I will actually have two vacancies in the sewer maintenance position budget if this position is approved by you tonight. And then I, I haven't started the process, but we have to go through a personnel rec committee. It's an internal and then get through the civil service. So that'll take some time before that is back in front of you. And we'd hope to bring this earlier, but we were kind of delayed a little bit waiting on all the budget. And then we're fortunate enough to move as fast as we could to get to this point shortly after this person's retirement. And so then, uh, Mr. Holmbrecker, then Mr. Graves, he, he's currently an employee with the city and we're just promoting yes. him. Too. He's a 14 year employee. Very good. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. So Mr. Holmbrecker, this, <clears throat> this would be the department that's gonna be somewhere between 73 million and $100 million uh, in arrears or in the hole or whatever term you want to use it, correct? Well, this this position is part of, if you remember everything, it ties into the consent decree. This right. oversees several things part of that consent decree. There's the CMOM program, the capacity management and operation maintenance aspect of it, where we're out there cleaning the sewers, televising the sewers, trying to make sure the sewers are in clean shape so when we have a sewer backup, we have limited the liability of the city and maintaining clean sewers. So we, first of all, hopefully we won't have those kind of backups and that can also relate to sanitary sewer overflows. Another aspect of this uh, area of the department is they are actually do doing various construction, raising manholes. You'll typically see them doing a lot of catch basin repairs. Some of the other stuff is street work that we're doing out, out within the city. Okay. So at some point in time, might we not get out from under that decree and Possibly, I, I mean, because I understand that's not general fund money, but that that's all money that's going to be paid by Waterloo taxpayers through user fees, whatever term we want to use. I mean, it's going to come out of the Waterloo citizens' pockets, correct? Yeah, but in my opinion, that continued level of maintenance needs to be ongoing within the city. And then I can't speculate. I wasn't here, but I, I'm going to speculate that in part, part of the reason the consent decree came apart because we weren't doing the level of maintenance that we're now doing and we're projected to move. In the budget presentation, we had gone from, I believe, 2016 to cleaning and televising 46 miles of sewer. Last year, we got up to 68, and to stay where we should be, to keep us in the good graces, we need to be at 75 miles a year of cleaning. So 
that is just one aspect. We're, we're getting closer to that target, and we're going to need the people to get that level of work done. And I'm sorry, maybe I misstated my question. I was just asking if we continue doing what we're doing, might we not get out from under that consent decree? That is the hope and the expectation. And, and do you have any kind of an estimate when that might happen? Well, we've projected when we talked about the consent decree, probably five, six years is what our, our goal is. We, we have another call coming up with EPA. They did pass the plan, but we've got another call coming up this week talking about that a little bit further to hopefully convince them that if we do well, we complete the projects we've proposed as part of the consent decree that we can petition ourselves out from being with under the, the auspices of the consent decree. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, thank you, Steve. Okay. Uh, my uh, uh, con only concern here is that these appointments don't happen quick enough. Um, I, I, in looking over the attachments, I see that this went through the, um, uh, in the that first uh, committee back in the first part of February, and we're going into the middle part of April right now. And these are very critical positions uh, for uh, providing services to the people of Waterloo uh, in their different capacities. And I would hope that uh, uh, positions in the future could be uh, expedited uh, rather than, uh, to me, they're, it just goes, this hiring process goes way too slow. We need to have people out on the, the street doing the work in their offices doing the work, uh, doing the work that the uh, people of Waterloo uh, uh, expect and deserve. And it's just going too slow and I wish, and I hope that it will uh, will speed up that process to get these positions filled. All right. Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shimp? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. All right, thank you. Someone take number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Item number two is a motion to receive and uh, file a proof of publication of notice of public hearing as for the 2018 right of way mowing contract. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Council. Is there? Chair, how do you vote? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. All right, the hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> the hearing is now closed. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plan, specification, form of contract, et cetera. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Council questions? Madam Clerk. Mr. Shimp? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. That motion's been made with a second. Madam Clerk? Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shimp? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive uh, and file and instruct the city clerk to read bids. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Sorry about this, Ms. Juwan. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the bids. Okay, and there are several options with each bid. Um, the first one is B&B &B Lawn Care. They provided 5% security. Option A, $57.75. B, $64, C, $40, D, no bid, E, $55.99. Second bidder was professional lawn care. They provided 5% security. Option A, $58.75. Option B, $54.80. Option C, $43.55. Option D, no bid. Option E, $61.75. Third bidder was Wilson Custom Tree. They provided no bid on option A. Option B, $60. Option B, $35. Option D, $595. Option E, $70. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah. 
for the resolution. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution that approving award of bids to B&B Lawn Care, Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa in the amount of $57.75 option A and $55.99 option E, Professional Lawn Care, LLC of Waterloo, Iowa in the amount of $54.80 option B, Wilson Custom Tree of Cresco, Iowa in the amount of $35 option C and $595 option D, in conjunction with the 2018 right-of-way mowing contract and approving the contracts, bonds, and certificates of insurance and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mrs. Jewin. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. Mr. Morsey. Yes. Mr. Shim. Yes. Mrs. Klein. Yes. All right. Thank you. Number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Amos. Mr. Amos. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and consider, or receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that is for the fiscal year 2018 lift station mowing contract. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item on the agenda? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you in favor of closing the hearing, Mrs. Jewin? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, the hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution confirming approval of bid document specifications, form of, con right. form of contract, et cetera. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Madam Clerk? Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Marcy? Yes. Mr. Shimp? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion adopting a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Marcy? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct city clerk to read bids and refer to waste management services for services director for review. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right. Okay. The first bidder was B&B Lawn Care Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa for bid Option A per occurrence, mowing $1,149.50, weed control $1,875. Option B, which is per occurrence, mowing $516.50, weed control $1,300. Bid option C per occurrence, mowing $346.50, weed control $1,200. Second bidder was R&D Lawn Care LLC. Mowing, no bid, weed, con weed control, no bid for option A. Option B, mowing, $540, weed control, $240. Bid option C, mowing, $380, weed control, $24. All right, thank you. Uh, number four, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Shemp. Number four, uh, I, I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing that's for the FY 2018 street reconstruction program contract number 944. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item on the agenda? Going a second time. Yes, sir. I moved to close the hearing and receive and file oral and written comments. Second. All right, the motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, the hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move to make a resolution confirming approval, plan, specifications, form of contract, et cetera. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Council discussion? Madam Clerk? Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. All right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to make a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Shim. Yes. Mrs. Klein. Yes. Mr. Amos. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mrs. Jewin. 
Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to receive file and instruct City Clerk Kelly Falkley to read bids and refer to City Engineer for review. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No, almost got me. All right. Madam Clerk. Okay. Estimates. Division 1, base bid plus alternate A, asphalt. Plus Division 2 and 3 estimate is $7,595,726.76. The second estimate is $8,023,000. $8,023,000. Sorry about that. First bidder is Kroll Incorporated of New Hampton, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Alternate B, their bid amount was $7,639,882.61. Our second bidder was Aspro Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount for alternate A was $7,168,904.23. Ms. Belkley, did you, um, on the two up there, did you differentiate the asphalt versus concrete? Division one base bid plus alternate A is asphalt plus division two and three estimate was the seven million five hundred ninety eight thousand seven hundred twenty six dollars seventy six cents. Division one base bid plus alternate B concrete plus division two and three estimate was eight million twenty three dollars seven hundred thirty two dollars and ninety six cents. All right, thank you. Uh, could someone take number five, please? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I can make a motion to receive and file proof of publication notice of public hearing on the Waterloo Center for the Arts fiscal year 2018 restroom renovation project. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item on the agenda? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plan, specification, form of contract, et cetera. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Madam Clerk? Mr. Schimp? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Schimp? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, yes sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and instruct the city clerk to read bids. Second. The motion has been made with second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk. The estimate was $400,000. The first bidder was Failer Hurley of Waterloo, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their base bid amount was $349,750. Alternate one bid amount was $20,500. Second bidder was Peterson Contract. Peters, Peters Construction Corporation, excuse me, of Waterloo, Iowa. They provided 5% security. Their base bid amount was $361,631. Alternate one, $13,431. We did receive a third bid. It was from Stiggy Construction Incorporated of Waverly, Iowa. However, their bid was rejected due to untimely filing. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving award of bid to Failer Hurley of Waterloo, Iowa in the amount of $370,250 in conjunction with the Waterloo Center for the Arts Fiscal Year 2018 Restroom Renovation Project and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said documents. Second. Yeah. That motion has been made with the second. Um, that is the low bidder as well as um, the bid estimate was 400000 I forgot to mention. All right, uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. All right, thank you. Number six. 
Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file approved publication and notice of public hearing on the purchase of one 2017 or newer backhoe loader for waste management services. Second. The motion is made with second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item on the agenda? David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Um, is this backhoe continually used so we need to, to not share with another department that has a backhoe? Um, basically, how many backhoes do we have in the city that are constantly used that we can't share between departments rather than having to buy another backhoe? All right. Um, Mr. Holmbrecker, uh, usage and then... Um, Sandy, if you have a estimate off the top of your head of how many we have. Steve Holmbrecker, Waste Management Services. Uh, this is actually one of two backhoes we have within our department. And I can't tell you exactly how often they're used, but the uh, when we do seem to need a backhoe, that's at the same time when we would try to get one that seems like public works, we have tried to share from time to time. And every time we seem to need one, it seems to be that same time of the construction season. And sometimes when you're out there, you can't wait while they've got a backhoe out there. If you've got to dig up a sewer or sanitary, you know, a backup, and you've got to dig down and make some corrections, you don't really have time to sit there and wait until Public Works maybe gets done with one of theirs. So, so you use it frequently? We, or use, it, we use it frequently. I mean, okay. but there, but there are times when it's more frequent than others during a more construction season. I mean, we that. use it less in the winter, naturally. And then uh, the second well, part of that. Make, that. make that job have to be in the winter then instead of. <laughs> I, <laughs> I wish, understand. I, I wish we could control I'm being it that smart. way. No, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, and um, uh, geographic location and timing when you need to use it de depends on how, many, how you were able to share with another department in this. Well, like I said earlier, I know there's times when one of ours has broke down or public works, we've tried to share and it seems like the other one always seems to be using it at the same time. It seems to be when one of us is busy. I don't know how many other backhoes. I know that we have two. I'm not sure of other departments. Maybe Sandy and Paul may have them as well. I, I just know what we have. All right, thank you. Sandy, you know how many offhand? You're supposed to know that right now. <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Mayor. If, if not, Look if out. not, can you give Mr. Dreyer a call or send an email to council and let Mr. Dreyer know tomorrow? Yes, and and one of our plans is to there is an old backhoe at the street department that is um, sitting right now because it has so many repairs that are needed that it's not feasible to repair. So we're hoping to the one that we replace at at sewer will bring to street. <coughs> And the one that's in such bad shape, we will get rid of. So, okay. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, if, if you want, Sandy. You, your questions come after. Oh, I don't have, I was just going to say, uh, Mr. Dreyer lives in my ward. So if you want to email that to me, I can give him a call. And okay. Let him know. Yes, sir. Forrest Dillavu, 1725 Huntington Road. I picked up the specs for this hoe and looked them over as well as going to the bid opening. It was interesting to me, we picked out three suppliers, three names of companies that make backhoes. Those were the only ones invited to bid. And it specified a model number and a manufacturer. Those three manufacturers, when the bids were open, there was no name of a manufacturer given. They were just, this person bid this much and this one bid that much. It would have been interesting to me to know what they were bidding. Also, the bid specs had multiple, I mean multiple, many things that they were asking for with a yes or a no answer. Is the seat belt three inches wide? It must be, th it, indicating it must be three inches wide. And is the oil filter mounted horizontally or vertical. It looked to me like someone took a sales brochure and looked down through the selling points of that manufacturer and put those on the bid spec. And I'm sure you're gonna have people say, well, they've already got it picked out, I'm not gonna bid. 
you know, it's wasteful to bid if they think it's got to have a three inch wide seat belt and a certain kind of radio and a certain kind of readout on the gauges and bells and whistles to do this when, when you, something is working or not working. Uh, it's probably all beneficial, but to me, it's like uh, you're eliminating bidders and that's where we come in, the taxpayers, we have to pay that. And if we get all the bells and whistles, we can't all drive Cadillacs and Mercedes. Some of us drive Fords, Chevys and Chryslers. And uh, we need to be cons considering all of those things when we bid a unit. All right, thank, thank you, you, sir. All right, any other questions? John Sherbin, 1715 Robin Road. Sort of backing up a little bit of what Forrest said. All those, uh, all this new equipment uh, specifications wise and stuff I took a quick glance at. This is all federal, federal, I'll get it out yet, federally mandated safety equipment. They have to have uh, brakes, they have to have emergency brakes, they have certain load ranges that how far they can reach out and everything. So to put all this into context, I guess, sort of a waste of time, you know. Uh, what we need to do is just tell them, this is what we need to do the job. What is this job gonna require? And let the contract or the people that are selling this stuff come out. Same thing with cars. You know, I've argued with that many times. I know I can, I, you know, they always say, oh, it's a state bid. Well, they get a price for X amount of dollars and there's places that, out of state and around that will bid a little cheaper. I don't know how or why, but uh, you know, if you've got a state price, and we've used that excuse too, it, it comes back on the back end of a, a bid that we took for the, some other place that says, well, we're gonna pay X dollars, and then we get that same thing for X dollars. Maybe we still still should throw that out there because there are people that do like to do business. Sometimes they've got extra one laying there and they wanna get it off their their uh, inventory because they pay, uh, they cost some money to have stuff like that sitting around. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Todd Obadal, 124 Amity Drive. Um, I am rising to speak to this issue because I was looking at uh, the specs that were put down for this piece of equipment for the city of Waterloo's purchase and uh, comparing the 70 some specifications that Waterloo's required versus the 30 requirements that were placed by the city of Waverly when they were looking for a similar, uh, for an identical purchase, <coughs> actually. Um, what I see on the Waverly specs is about function. Does it do this? Does it do that? What I'm seeing a lot on the Waterloo specifications is form. What does it look like? Does it have this thing? Um, one of the requirements for the Waterloo purchase is that uh, we have a right-hand side uh, access to the engine for daily checkpoints. So if, a comp if another vehicle has a left-hand side access point for the checks, that is no longer meeting the specifications and that will be rejected. Um, I'm thinking about when I was a younger person, and I'll date myself here, when the Dodge Daytonas first came out, I really wanted one. Uh, the other day I went online and looked at the specifications of the Dodge Daytona with the turbocharger, and I realized my non-sports car outperforms that tremendously today than uh, it would have when the Daytona, the Daytona, when it first came out. We have requirements on here that do the same thing. We're asking about engine displacement. We're asking about uh, stroke bore uh, measurements, um, which is, doesn't mean anything. It, what matters is the output. And does the, uh, does the piece of equipment do the job? Uh, I'm concerned about, uh, there's a couple on the hydraulic system. Um, it says that uh, we're looking at a 42 gallon per minute pump with the 3625 PSI. Well, if I'm getting more gallons per minute with less PSI, is that okay? Or is that a piece of equipment that Waterloo doesn't need, but it's good enough for Cedar Falls or Waverly? Um, one other thing on here, and I would like an answer to this question. I would like to know who put together the specifications for the Waterloo purchase, and I would also like to know why it is advantageous for Waterloo to insist upon a single hydraulic mechanism on the scoop versus a double hydraulic mechanism on the scoop. How does that make this piece of equipment better? 
Um, if it has just one hydraulic, does that increase its performance? Or is this, again, just another form requirement that is squeezing out competitive bids? Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, with regards to these specs, um, I don't, just opening up the bids, what was it the other day, um, there's not a motion to award anybody the contract, so nothing has been turned down. Um, so I, I would hope that um, when this is turned over to the director for review, um, the director would take a look at all of these particular things and see if based upon what models you ask for, if the other ones are sufficient enough to do the job. So uh, not having that opportunity right now, I'm not gonna ask staff to get up and give a full report because they just got the bids and there's been nothing put forth to council yet. So I don't think this is the time to do that yet. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Mr. Mayor, I have a comment first. So if we could take a look at the bidding process, the spec sheet. There's a portion for council. So if you just wait one second, oh, okay. we'll come right back to you. So we have a motion to close the hearing. Do we have a second? Second. A motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Mr. Mayor. All right. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution confirming approval of specifications, bid documents, et cetera. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Mr. Jacob. <coughs> So I just think it'd be good for the sense of competition to be kind of wide open and encourage bidders because that's <coughs> what protects the taxpayers and encourages competition. That we look at our spec sheet to make sure that anything on there is important and anything that's not important is removed to where you're not having to check a no box because I don't, maybe you, maybe, you, maybe you want this, but mine does it this different way. As long as it can dig a hole and he can get down the road, I think, that's a good start. So we can kind of clean up the spec sheet to where we're not discouraging bidders. I, I think we could go a long ways with trying to make sure that we, we have a fair bidding process that it looks very open and we encourage competition. Competition actually would help us, I would think, ensure that we're getting competitive prices. So you're saying try to find, figure out ways to increase competition. Well, I would say if you look at the spec sheet, there's a lot of no yes or no boxes you have to check. Um, you, know, do, you know, does your does the tractor do you check the oil on the right side? Well, if I check it on the left side, I have to say no, I can't check it on the right side. Is my tractor 4.5 liter motor? Well, maybe mine isn't, but maybe my motor is more efficient to where I have more horsepower or enough horsepower or that kind of thing. So I just think if we could clean it up to where it's not so restrictive as far as yes and no, but yet we look more at performance um, and try to be a little bit more open-minded on the bidding process. That might encourage other bidders. And also, I don't know if we should just say we just th these three models would probably, uh, I think there was three models mentioned. Maybe, maybe there's other uh, vendors out there that could provide equipment to the city as well. Come on, if you want to answer some of them. And then we'll go to Mrs. Klein. Uh, Steve Holmbrecker, Waste Management Services. I'll just kind of address this to everyone. This has been a, a kind of a, a long process. We, we tried to do our due diligence and the form that I think everybody looked at, we did start out with John Deere because that's what our current equipment is. They're the ones that provide us with the initial set of specs that had the, these things, check what you want, check what you don't want. They're the ones that help put this together and said these are two other companies that their backhoes can bid this specification. From that point, we tried to make sure the stuff where we had the boxes checked yes from the our operations point of view, those were applicable to our operators. I'm not a backhoe operator. I'm not going to be out there. I'm not the one that knows that. So we solicited input from staff who was going to be operating our backhoe. <clears throat> and then at that point in time, we sat down with the lead operator and the mechanics at Public Works and we fine-tuned that because of their experience on working with backhoes and they found out what works, what doesn't work, what they have the stuff to work with. And from there, the final specification was put together. I'll admit that it might have been cleaner had we <coughs> probably taken that form and removed the, you know, the stuff that we, we didn't have a, a box checked one way or the other. But 
and I, I know in talking with uh, uh, Sandy that I know that the way the bids were read at the, at the reading, from I, unfortunately I was ill, wasn't there, that the manufacturer of that wasn't there, but I think maybe if it's okay, there were three different manufacturers that were able to bid this. And it, let me ask. Yeah, I, I think the question is though, first of all, would they even want to bid because they're gonna to have to check a lot of no boxes. And if they do turn that in, all those no boxes, will we as a city accept that bid or use that no as a reason to disqualify their, their overall bid? So, so at this I, point I, in time, we're still reading them. This is where Sandy and I have to do our due diligence, just go back and look at what was checked and not checked, see if they met the specifications. So just an example, a uh, 4.5 liter um, with uh, 25 horsepower versus a 4.2 liter with 55 horsepower. That's not going to eliminate you. You have to go through that. So are there any non-negotiables that you've seen yet? That's, if you don't mind, so I'm, I'm going to yield this portion to Sandy. She's more involved in the day-to-day -day bidding. And that's, that's, what I, that's what I'm thinking. I, I had a conversation with Mr. Mr. Jacobs last week about different things that we could do maybe to potentially open it up or be a little bit more laxed in what we're finding. But the, the thing I'm trying to say, we, we haven't discluded anyone yet. No, and everything that, um, we haven't had time to sit down with the mechanics and everybody to go through the specs. But it's also an understanding that if, if it's a performance, if, if bidders can perform, their machinery can perform, just because they don't meet our specs doesn't mean we're going to disqualify them. Right. So they have the option of bidding option one, two, three, and four, or if they can't meet something, they write in on the specs what they have. And this is what takes us a longer time to sit down and go through each one to make sure that um, they have what we need. So. Um, and we did get... Um, bids from Caterpillar, Case, and John Deere. Right. Um, were, those, were those the only three that were invited, three companies that were invited? Well, I mean, I it's far, out, not, not brand, but... No. Um, I sent out five invitations to um, Titan, to Altorfer, to Murphy, to Martin Equipment, and... Ziegler. What was the other one? Ziegler. Ziegler, yes. So and I, so I'm thinking that the broader conversation is, you know, taking a look at, you know, well, how many points were there? Ninety, seventy, or something like that. So and, and we can redo that whole spec, so you know, if we go out it. again, um, but, we can redo it all. But right now you have three different brands that have bid on this from Caterpillar, Case, and a John, John Deere. Deere. We have two Caterpillar, I believe. Okay. All right, Mrs. Uh, Klein. Well, I've heard I've heard from people too about this. Um, my concern is, and I think they've already answered it, is that the city be very careful. It's not like me going to buy my SUV. I am very brand loyal, and I'm very dealer loyal. In a, in the city, we've just got to go that extra mile to make sure we're not tilting any specifications toward a particular dealer or a particular brand. And I just want to reiterate that we really be careful in that. All right, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Morrissey and then you, Mr. Shemp. Oh, you, you were first back, go ahead. No, you're younger. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. oh, he's, he's been deferring to the, <laughs> to the more seasoned folks. I would, now it's I his refer turn. to the, the senior council. <laughs> um, I, my only question, Sandy, is uh, on the bid tab here, we, we estimated 130. I see what the bids come in and out. I don't know if you've had a full chance to actually look at them, but then on expenditures required, it says 156,000. So I guess where, where's the 156 come in? Is this a misprint or what? Well, that's what we thought at first it might come in. Okay. And then after talking to some dealers, it we knew it wasn't going to be that high. Well, that's good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, to me, one of the most important things that Sandy and Steve said was how you value the workers' input. Workers get so under undervalued anymore, and it's all, uh, you know, what the head honcho thinks or whatever. But you guys actually are getting the opinions of your workers, and I appreciate that. I, I applaud you for that and commend you for that. Thank you very much. 
Right. So, yeah, we haven't even heard the, <laughs> the beard yet publicly. <laughs> okay. And you're the honcho. That's right. So thanks for that. <laughs> the honcho. <laughs> All right. Mr. Okay. All right. Um, where, where are we at? Uh, vote. Right. Vote if we're vote. done talking. Okay. Confirmation. Okay. Madam Special Clerk. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Schimp? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. Motion's been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mrs. Juin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Schim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, and instruct city clerk to read bids and refer to interim public works director for review. Second. The motion's been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Mr. Mayor? The. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I read the business letter. <laughs> the estimate. That's something about what? this portion. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> the estimate was $130,000. The first bid was Ziegler Cat of Postville, Iowa. Their bid amount was $133,000. They provided a bid on a Caterpillar. Second bid was from Titan Machinery of Center Point, Iowa. Their bid amount was $101,593. They provided a bid on a Case Backhoe. Third bid was from Altrefer Incorporated of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Their bid amount was $106,786. They provided a bid on a Caterpillar. Final bid was from Murphy Tractor and Equipment Company of Waterloo, Iowa. Their bid amount was $111,635. They provided a bid on a John Deere backhoe. All right, so we have a range of $133,000 to $101,000. So uh, the process now is you'll get with staff and look at the different specs and then uh, bring something back to the council. All right. Mr. Shemp. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, on number seven, I'd like to I move to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that is for general obligation bonds, um, gen GCP or general corporal corporate pr purposes, Number two, the issuance of not to exceed 700,000 general obligation bonds for general corporate purposes. Second, Mr. Mayor. We, get, we have to read them individually per attorney. Oh, right. we do? Yes. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I called the attorney this afternoon anticipating that this question would come up and she stated that we do need to read, read all the bids individually, or the, uh, excuse me, do the public hearings individually. Shouldn't have called. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> sorry, I won't anticipate council's needs anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I didn't mean that. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Who had the second? I apologize. Aye. I did. Okay. Thank all you. right. Uh, the hearing is now open. Do we have any questions about these items? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to close, close the hearing and receive and file oral written comments or lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> that motion been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Oh, sorry. Uh, opposed? All right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I, make, I move to make a resolution instituting proceedings to take additional action for the issuance of not to exceed 700000 in general obligation bonds. Second. The motion's been made with the second. Questions? Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. All right. Number eight, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file approval public, uh, publication of notice of public hearing on general obligation bonds, GCP3, the issuance of not to exceed $700,000 general obligation bonds for general corporate purposes. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Mayor. Aye. Opposed? All right. 
Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution instituting proceedings to take additional action for the issuance of not to exceed $700,000 general obligation bonds. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Council? Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right, thank you. Number nine. Please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Number nine is um, I, I moved the motion to receive and file proof of publication and notice of public hearing. That's for general obligation bonds, GCP4, the issuance of not to exceed 700000 general obligation bonds for general corporate purposes. Second. The motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? Mr. Mayor. Oh. Yes, sir. Um, oh, yes, Mr. Director. Oh, motion, to clo motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral and written comments. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I make a resolution instituting proceedings to take additional action for the issuance of not to exceed $700,000 in general obligation bonds. Second. A motion to be made with the second, Madam Clerk. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Aye. Mr. Yes. Amos? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right. Thank you. Number 10. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Amos. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing and that is for general obligation bonds, GCP5, the issuance not to exceed $700,000, general obligation bonds for general corporate purposes. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? Mr. Mayor, I'd like yes. to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion has been made with second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, right. I'd like to make a motion adopting a resolution instituting proceedings to take additional action for the issuance of not to exceed $700,000 general obligation bonds. Second. That motion has been made with second. Um, Madam Clerk? Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shemp? Yes. All right, thank you. Number 11. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of public publication of notice <coughs> of public hearing on general obligation bonds ECP-UR6, the issuance of not to exceed $700,000 general obligation bonds for essential urban renewal corporate purposes. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The hearing is open. Is there anyone I'd like to speak to this item? David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. My only question is, what does this take the city debt up to now? Does that take the city... That down to now. Oh, you said up to. <laughs> well, you're you're bonding. That doesn't I'm, mean it's going yeah. down. So do you have a? Can you answer somewhat of part of that question? Michelle Wiener, Chief Financial Officer. I think after we make our principal payments due June, our total outstanding debt will be lower by, I think about a million. I didn't bring that with me, but it will be should be lower after this issue. So we're 119 instead of 120. Actually, you asked one question. She said, you said, is it going to go up? She answered that. Then you came back with a ding. So this is a conversation, well, is it, Mr. Mayor? No, it's uh, you get an opportunity. It's a dictatorship. OK, thank you. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Dreyer. Hey, Mr. Are we on council portion now? No, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. We're starting the hearing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, John Sherbin, 1715 Robin Road. I've uh, asked a few times, and I guess I still don't understand or and or something. When we sell these bonds, do, is it not for a certain length of time? And I don't know what these $700,000 bonds lengthwise is. <coughs> but I've always heard that we pay that off early for like our police cars and our various construction projects and whatever and repairs for buildings and retirement plans and all the other things that we borrow bond money from that I don't know why we can't get out of the general fund and uh, get rid of our gray area and not pay all the interest. But uh, my question being, uh, 
when do these get paid off and how do you pay them off early? Do mm -hmm. they, uh, we don't sell them for a length of time, you know, like 20 years or 15 years. And that's my question. I'm gonna set up a meeting with you and Michelle so you can sit down and talk about these things. You wanna answer? Michelle Wiedner, Chief Financial Officer. So tonight we're really getting hearing authority to sell bonds. This is not the actual bond sale. <clears throat> um, and we, we don't sell for retirement plans. This will just be for capital projects. When we sell bonds, we sell them on a set schedule with annual maturities. And they, I do generally increase the principal in the early years in order to pay off the equipment in a shorter time period. So these, we are, at, it, we're not sure yet if we're gonna sell them 12 years or 15 years, but it'll be one of those two. The taxable bonds, we may sell over 10 um, in an effort to get our interest lower. But there, when we sell them, there will be a set schedule of how much principal we paid off each year over the 10, 12, or 15 year terms that we use. We generally sell our bonds with a call date, which we can't. We generally can't pay them off before that call date. It's generally at about year seven. So at year seven, if interest rates then are cheaper for the remaining term, then we will refund them out and and do them the balance at a lower rate for the remaining term. We, since we're not at the um, sale yet, we don't quite have all those details worked out. I hope that got all the questions. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Uh, uh, um, we need to, yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Aye. Yes, we do. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution instituting proceedings to take additional action for the issuance of not to exceed $700,000 general obligation bonds. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Mr. Mr. Uh, just there, there is a difference between this final one that we're doing here and the other four that we did. So did we, um, can we just have a little explanation on what the difference between general obligation and um, urban renewal? bonding is state law has different requirements for different types of projects that cities are allowed to borrow money for general obligation bonds are oh, this is hard essential is a more critical considered a more critical function of city government i guess i'll that's the word i will use so urban renewal projects are considered an essential corporate purpose and that's defined in the state code of Iowa. So our bond attorneys go through and kind of sort our projects by what qualifies for urban renewal, what qualifies for essential, what qualifies for all these other general purposes. So the urban renewal, which are related to our TIF areas, um, our urban renewal areas, these are for projects in those areas. And it's just a different provision, different section of state law. Thank you. All right, thank you. And probably there's a little bit of a spelling error in there. <laughs> Maybe I don't spell it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. I see the spelling error now. <laughs> All right, um, 12, 13, and 14. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number 13 is adopting a resolution approving a 2080 agreements with Elk Run Heights, Cedar Township, and East Waterloo Township to provide fire and EMS protection and authorize the mayor to execute said documents. 13 is adopting a resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work performed by Soft Play LLC of Huntersville, North Carolina at a total cost of $74,999 in conjunction with the fiscal year 2018 Phelps Youth Pavilion Playscape project. And item number 14 is adopting a resolution approving award of contract to K Cunningham Construction Company, Inc. of Cedar Falls, Iowa in the amount of $770,398.26 and 25 cents and approving the contract, bonds, and certificate of insurance for the fiscal year 2018 Ainsboro Avenue improvements from U.S. Highway 20 
to Sam Marnin Drive, contract number 942, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Questions about, yeah, yeah. These, about these three items? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, so on number 12, 28 E agreements with Elk Run, Cedar Township, East Waterloo. Um, the the cost of, of those don't even cover a firefighter. Um, we're looking at about $40,000 that we get total off of that. But I mean, I guess, my, Pat, can you maybe speak to what, who else bids on, Elk, Elk Run's our biggest one at 30, a little over 37,000 we get from them here and the other two are roughly 2000 ish right around there so pat can you speak to that and about who bids on these and and what would what would happen should we choose not to provide um fire ser ems services to these areas mr trelor sure pat trelor fire chief i'll try to give you a, an overview uh, as it stated that the 2080s extend the uh, fire ambulance and hazmat response to those three communities elk run east waterloo township and cedar township we average about 90 calls a year between uh, all three of those uh, townships uh, with Elk Run averaging about 76 calls a year. Of those 76, we run approximately 70 EMS calls in that community, which the patient is billed for if they're transported. East Waterloo Township, we average about 12 uh, calls a year into that township. And Cedar Township, which is a small township, for the agreement that's in front of you, there's four streets in that township. Uh, we run about two calls a year into that township. So what before you tonight is uh, all three for approval. Uh, when we submitted the budget in January and it was approved in March, that included a 5% increase. That's what's before you tonight. So after it was approved in March, we reached out to the three townships and said that we, uh, are slapping you with a 5% increase and all three indicated that they're okay with it. So we're here uh, tonight for your approval to have uh, the mayor sign those documents. To try to answer your question, Mr. Shimp, uh, I know Evansdale Fire has quoted uh, Elk Run in the past uh, to cover their uh, city for fire and EMS. Uh, they've chosen not to go with them. I'm told that they offered a, a much lower price than uh, what we were quoting them. But we feel that we're being properly compensated for the amount of call volume that we run into those communities. And, and Chief, um, prior to this, when was the last time <coughs> we increased uh, fees? Or uh, Well, we increased in 2013, 15, 17, and now we're asking for an increase in 2019. So 2013, we raised 3%, 15, we raised 5, 17, we raised 3%, and 19, we're asking for a 5% increase. Um, Chief, Chief can, uh, can you explain? So what, let's say that there's a call in Elk Run and there's a call in Waterloo, um, and everybody's tied up. Let's just say it's one of, one of those situations, one of those nights. Um, who... Who do we go to first? Are we going to Elk Run first? Or are we going to Waterloo for Waterloo resident first? Well, I'll, depending on the call, uh, the f the first uh, dispatch to the address will will receive our rigs first. So, for example, if we had a working fire in Elk Run, uh, we would dispatch the a normal complement to that fire, just like we would in the city of Waterloo. If another fire occurred while we're working that fire, we would cut away some of those crews to, to come back into Waterloo. But there's no doubt that this agreement's um, extending our jurisdiction and uh, at times can uh, dedicate some of our resources outside the community. And, and that's why we charge for these services. The way I view it for them is it seems to be like an insurance policy for them. Uh, they're happy if they don't call us at all, uh, but they know that we'll be available uh, under this agreement uh, to respond with a professional career fire department. Well, um, Mr. Mayor, is this, uh, is this another one of those fees that when we do the fee study will be something that will be included in that? Yeah. I think I really, um, I know after last week with animal control and everything, I, I just, I just kind of have some, some issues with um, 
constantly providing these services, I think I think we should be making money off of them rather than than breaking even. I guess is, is my thought. Certainly, I, I understand we have an excellent one of the best fire departments in the state, probably in the Midwest, and I, I know a lot of folks can can speak to that. Um, you know, so I I think for that, that great service that that these folks are getting and not paying the property taxes, um, I just I'd like to see them pay a little bit more. So um, that's where I'm at, and I am I am gonna um, oppose the oppose no. I'm gonna vote no on number twelve. All right, thank you. Yes, sir, um, Chief. Um, so the the five percent rate increase. So it, it's been two years since we've had a rate increase. So it really is probably like a two and a half percent rate That's increase. That's correct. Right? Uh, yeah. About okay. two point six. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then is um, Evansdale? Are they a uh, partial volunteer, partial professional, or are they all volunteer? What's the status of that fire department? I don't know. Well, my understanding is on the fire side they're uh, all volunteer, and on the EMS side they do have some full time. Uh, paramedics hired to uh, run their ambulance. I'm not sure if it's 24, uh, 24 hours, but that's my understanding of their staffing setup. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Madam Clerk. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mrs. Juin. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Shim. No on 12. Yes on the rest. Mrs. Klein. Yes. Mr. Amos. Yes. All right, thank you. 15 and 16, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Amos. I'd like to make a motion approving the final quarterly summary change order number two for a net increase of $1,790.60 for the fiscal year 2016 Galactic Drive and Fitzway Drive extensions. Contract number 896 and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Number 16 is a resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work performed by Peterson Contractors, Inc. of Rhinebeck, Iowa, at a total cost of 500, oh, that's $355,598.85 in conjunction with fiscal year 2016 Galactic Drive and Fitzway Drive extensions, contract number 896. Second. All right, the motion's been made with a second. Questions? Madam Clerk. Mrs. Juwin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, thank you. Step 17 and 18, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving a sewage treatment agreement with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources to extend sanitary sewer to the Irving Square addition in conjunction with the fiscal year 2018 street reconstruction Program contract number 944 and authorize the mayor to execute said document and 18 is resolution approving request of the city of Waterloo to name a private street Marigold Drive generally located southeast of Afton Drive. Second. A motion has been made with the second for those two items. Uh, discussion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Morrissey. I, just a clarification, uh, Noel, uh, and that was the in 18, is that street actually going to be called Marigold Drive, the public, or is it going to be have before it the term private? Mr. Anderson. I, it was confusing the attachment. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. So back a couple years back or a couple months back, I forget when this actually went through, um, they were finalizing some things out there. They vacated a portion of street right away because it was a dead end street that didn't really go anywhere south of Afton um, to allow the home builder out there to build a, a larger house. Um, in terms of what will actually be out there physically, the private street signs are a different color. So it'll say Marigold Drive, just like the public one does, but it'll be blue. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks Mark. Yes, sir. Mr. Anderson, I like ask you one, one other quick question. Nice spin move. I, I like that. <laughs> That's a good pivot. Did so, it. Do we have a, a policy or how we come up with these names? I mean, I know sometimes developers, they pick the names, they name them after their kids or family members or whatever, which is fine. But it just seems like we've got some opportunities for some historical uh, naming. And We have a really large dartboard. No. Um, <laughs> actually, the engineering department actually reviews all the names to make sure that none of them are too similar to other streets in the entire Cedar Valley metro area basically to try to avoid confusion for public safety purposes. 
Um, so they submit names to the engineering department and then they will review them to make sure that they are acceptable so they're not too confusing based on another street name. Who, who submits that? I'm sorry, I missed the first the one. Generally the developer who's building the street. Gotcha, okay. Basically, Noel's correct, and actually, if you have some suggestions, we'd love to have some because we have some developers that struggle a little bit with that and are looking for names or for us to suggest some. So I got a list. If you have some, we'd we'd like to have them, and we'll help. Every council, every council member. <laughs> <laughs> we want to sell houses. Hopefully, that will help. <laughs> but yeah, so so what are we doing, uh, Madam Clerk? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're voting on it now, right? Do we have a second? No, yes. yep. we do. Okay. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. All right, thank you. Number 19, Mr. Please. Mayor. Yes, sir. M number 19, I move to receive and file, consider and pass for the second time. Um, or what? No, number 19 is a request by Heinold Hog Markets LLC for a site plan amendment to the M2P planned industrial district for the construction of a 12,375 square foot livestock processing facility located south of 720 North Elk Run Road. And I move to receive, file, consider, and pass for the second time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10 4 4 approving a site plan amendment on certain property located south of 720 North Elk Run Road. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Any questions, comments? Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion has been made with a second. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. A question, uh, when uh, we're involved with these task forces, one of the things that, that I'd, I'd seen uh, when reviewing the or, or all the material that had been given to us is that a motion to just suspend the rules is a two-thirds vote. Is that correct, Kelly? Yeah, six. Oh. Supermajority. Well, how, in the information I was given, it said two-thirds to suspend the rules which is a lesser than the three-quarters or supermajority. I mean, that's what's in the literature that we received. So you need five? Kelly. Is that what you're saying? No, you know, four we get it passed. Mm. Four is a simple majority. Or five would. Majority. Five would get it passed. Four is a simple majority. Five, five I mean, would get it passed, excuse me. They approved votes to suspend the rules. So, what you, so, so... Miss Jewin, you need to turn down a CNN or a sports center. <laughs> it was my other phone, sorry. All right, so right now I'd adhere to past practice until we can take a look exactly what you're talking about, Mr. Morrissey. Madam Clerk. Sure. Mr. Shim. This is to suspend the rules. Yep. yep. No. Mrs. Klein? No. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right, thank you. Number 20, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the third time and adopt an ordinance, amending ordinance number 5079 as amended, City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4, approving to rezone a total of 129.16 acres from A1 Agricultural District to R1 1 and 2 Family Residence District for the development of a 210 lot subdivision next to 5805 Kimball Avenue. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All right, this is our third. Um, we have uh, Mr. Henning, and I'm asking for, um, this is only for the, the, um, the rezone right now. So if you got new revelation, uh, please come forward. Could someone please assist the good gentleman? Mr. Hart, Mayor Hart and City Council, 
I saw an excellent headline in the, yesterday's paper, Mayor Tout's Waterloo Successes. Very good uh, state of the city address. I totally agree with your emphasis on development in Waterloo. At past city council meetings, Mr. Manning estimated $54 million in total development for Paradise Estates. Mr. Bauer estimated $8 million in just the infrastructure and $800,000 in engineering costs. Big money. At March 26th city council meeting, Mr. Anderson said he could sell the property to other people and they would take the money south. I'd like to point out that Mr. Anderson and his employee Garland and Gove are the only Waterloo residents on his team. The executive officer of the Cedar Valley Home Builders Association maintains a Waterloo post office box, but resides in Cedar Falls. In 2017, only two of 12 homes on his parade of homes were in Waterloo, 10 were in Cedar Falls. Mr. Anderson also hired Fairgram from Cedar Rapids for the engineering and Rose Companies from Cedar Falls for the developer. I wonder where they buy their office supplies and groceries. Big money heading south and west. Waterloo also has excellent engineering and development firms. I hope Mr. Anderson uses more Waterloo suppliers, companies, and contractors if Paradise Estates moves forward. Win-win economic development right here in Waterloo. <coughs> Different subject. Iowa sub agricultural leadership and I will mourn the loss of 29, 129 acres of exceptionally excellent Iowa farmland if A1 to R1 rezoning is approved. I now believe that you, Mr. Mayor, the City Council, Planning and Zoning Commission, City Departments, and the Waterloo Schools have recognized and taken actions to put needed focus on safety, traffic flow, a water pressure improvement study, and drainage. I thank you for these actions. I now support the A1 to R1 rezoning step for Paradise Estates because of these actions. Without an adequate delay now, I will proactively work to address additional concerns in the next steps. Using the five C's, cooperation, collaboration, communication, Covey seven habits, and consensus building by all people involved will be keys to achieving the success you talked about. And you talked about a lot of those things like collaboration and cooperation in your state of the speech, city speech. I thank you for your time and thoughtful consideration. And one last comment. I do want to thank Buzz for wearing an orange tie today. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Henning. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? <coughs> Madam Clerk? Oh. Yes, sir. We would bring the microphone back to you, but uh, the, the, the folks want to see your, your smile. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't take smiles for granted. Thank you. Thank you. Rodney Anderson, 261 Heather. I just want to come today to uh, throw my support behind Mr. Buzz Anderson and elaborate on what this gentleman just said here. One of the, one of the words I think he left out is trust. The first time I met Buzz is when we built the building on Franklin Street where it was old WB and Marine. I met with Buzz for hours. First time he was late. <laughs> <laughs> but I met with him for hours. And over the years, we collaborated together just like the gentleman was saying. And it's all about the trust factor. Um, this man sat down with me probably for six to seven months. Um, Mr. Noel Anderson know how we went through that whole process of getting that building done. And the only thing that he would come back to is, could he trust me to build what we said we were going to build? And could I trust him to follow through what he said he was going to do? So only thing I could tell the neighborhood is work with them, make sure that you get a trustworthiness with him, and you'll see what kind of person he is. Anyone who uses the handle Waterloo Man for his email address, he loves Waterloo. You know, so I would say to the council, the, the residents, and to Buzz, the best thing to do is sit down and work with him. Because the only thing I can tell you is at the end of the day, he's going to tell you the truth. 
even if it hurts you, but you have to tell him the truth also. So hold him responsible and make sure that Waterloo do become a better place because without him, Buzz Anderson can go anywhere in the United States plus other countries to do something. In this town, for him to do this, and this is not free, I can tell you that land would sit because a lot of times farmers don't go into business because when you're four and five million dollars in debt, who are you going to hand that debt to? So I would just say, you know, work with them, gain a trust, and you'll see that this guy's going to pull through what he's going to pull through. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I, I would just like to say, too, I do think this is one of those prime examples where the three readings and taking our time and taking a breath. And I think that uh, I know Councilman Jacobs, I believe, and Councilman Juwan uh, and I all went out and visited with the uh, Orange folks. And, and I do think everybody has uh, their issues here. But I do think that Mr. Anderson and the Orange folks had conversations. And I think there's been some give and take. And obviously, there's going to be conversation continuing to go on because it's not done yet as far as some of the safety issues and, and water issues. But I think this worked out is, is uh, Mr. Hennings mentioned, a win-win situation. So I think this is how it ought to work. All right. Mr. Yes, sir. I just want to say, um, last week I, oh, sorry. Um, last week I was the only one that um, voted no to, to suspend the rules. And I, uh, the reason I did that is because I think, we, as Mr. Schmidt said, these, these things need three readings. There's three readings for, for a purpose. And I'm glad to see Mr. Henning um, come around. But I, I will say that um, the traffic study is still a concern for me um, since there is the school right there. So uh, uh, I will definitely be voting in favor of this and I will vote in favor of it the entire way. The only thing that would um, stop me from voting in favor of this would not seeing a traffic study. I want that area to make sure that we're safe. Um, you know, I, I know what it's like picking kids up from school. So uh, we need to make sure that, that that area is extremely safe and that it it works well for the residents that are there now and the future residents. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Mr. Anderson. Uh, we, we, Mr. Anderson, would you allow um, this lady to go and then we'll call you right back up after that. So I just gonna be last anyway. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Mary Margaret Halverson, 178 Side Hill Drive. I just, first of all, this has been a huge learning, planning, zoning, city, Thank you for what you guys do. I would not want to do it uh, at all. But my concern or the, the issue I want to bring up, yes, there's going to be a traffic study. And um, we had planning and zoning um, and encircled into that to make sure that the drives from the new development were included in the study as well as the hill and what comes before and after. What's concerning to me is that in our discovery process and learning process through this whole thing, it was referred to the traffic study would just be a sham. I'm just saying I hope that that's really not the case. I was concerned when it was talked about last week at planning and zoning that, oh, uh, you know, the numbers have already been looked at, um, that I didn't even get the sense that they were gonna look at the traffic in the critical 20 minute zone when school is happening, which is completely different you know, during discharge time is completely different than any other time of the day. So I hope, in fact, that that is not a sham because there's a, there's a lot to be seen during that period of time. I hope that it's not somebody with a visor just uh, taking his pen to the paper, looking at the numbers from a year ago. I was just kind of mortified when they referred to it in planning and zoning. So anyway, I have confidence that that will be a valid um, study. Also, I just want to encourage the Waterloo schools to make sure that they hear the message and the concerns about the traffic and the safety. To me, that's the crux of this whole thing and the, and the concern. We want our students to be safe, and I know they do too, and I don't know all the guidelines be, uh, surrounding school safety, but I certainly think between the developer and the school, they could have an awesome entry for school buses, cars, and students, and pedestrian people that's more appealing than just all off Kimball Avenue. So I hope that there are discussions. And then finally, you know, we talked a little bit about streets and what's in a name. There's a lot in a name and 
paradise, I mean, heck, I, I plan to be there, heaven. But as a development, I don't know if there's some negative shadows around that name. I would just appeal to the developer to consider other names. And, you know, I don't know if that you're just set on it and, hey, it's your land, it's your decision, I respect that. But I would appeal, you know, to consider one that talking to multiple people that is very marketable and appealing to a large population. So thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Ms. Hopes. Um, I, I just want to I just want to state one thing for the record. Um, you got seven folks up here that have been elected. Uh, and one on the phone too that care about children and the well-being of children. So when it comes to safety, uh, you've heard Councilman Shimp talk about it. You heard everyone pretty much talk about that. But people want to have safe communities. So um, that portion, you can bet that everyone up here will make sure that that happens. Um, also, um, with regards to the school system. Um, there has been a challenge, you know, that 20 minutes when school lets out or, or start, there's always that congestion. But I would assume, and I know for a fact, that Dr. Lindemann and the school system cares as well, and they have concerned folks that uh, volunteer and work, like the one sitting behind you, <laughs> wanting, wanting to make sure that uh, uh, children are safe. So I, I can't speak for these guys, but I know for a fact that's a huge concern. Oh, praise council members and audience. I'm not out of line. This is my vote of appreciation endorsing Buzz Anderson to develop with this project. I've known Mr. Anderson for almost 36 years. He really dealt with me very fairly, and I could trust him. And I think and feel confident that he's also trying to do his best for the citizens of Waterloo. He doesn't want to hurt kids, he doesn't want to hurt anybody. He wants to help make Waterloo better. Thank you. All right, thank you. My name is Bruce W. Kazer, CRT Apartments, Waterloo. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. I believe we have we have one for the gentleman right here, then Mr. Obadal, and then you, ma'am. Uh, and then we'll hear from, uh, I mean, Mr. Anderson after that. Jesse Thompson, 313 West Orange Road. First timer at uh, city government. You obviously can tell people of Orange are pretty proud of where they live. Uh, one thing that I've kind of noticed is you guys have kind of all put all your cookies in one basket waiting on the traffic impact study. Um, I really don't see how you can get any more of a biased report having it paid for and arranged by the developer. I mean, if I was the one in charge of it, I'd probably report in favor of the guy that's paying the bill. That's all I've got. Mm -hmm. Todd Obadal, 124 uh, Amity Drive. I received a word, I don't live in the Orange uh, neighborhood, but um, I have a friend who sends children to Orange School, and uh, the Orange School sent out a text to the parents of the students asking them, or instructing them rather, to no longer park on Hammond uh, when they're picking up, uh, or excuse me, Kimball, when they're picking up students um, because it was causing a safety issue. Um, it was brought up several times in the last two weeks that it's not that the development is going to create a safety issue, is that there is a safety issue right now. I understand that uh, the, the terms of the agreements to develop, um, Mr. Anderson has to submit a completed plat presentation and um, <clears throat> that it, would, it could be an undue burden for him to do a preliminary study and then have to do another one and another one. I get that. I think the city does need to examine and do a study right now about the conditions right now and also looking at what the conditions are going to be like when we put in 210 houses over there and get started on that right now. This would be separate than, from approving this rezoning. This is something that the city can do on its own proactively so we have a better understanding as to what exactly needs to be done over the next five, 10 years as these 210 houses come in. So we understand what the cost to the city, to the area is and what the cost to Mr. Anderson is. We should do this ahead of time and not just wait until the last minute and say, well, we've got to do this one option because if we don't, everything else is getting blown up. Let's get in front of this. 
Let's start, let's have the city do the traffic study on this and anticipating what it's going to look like under presented plans and what it's going to look like at the crunch times for the school pick up and drop off. I said again, right now this, the school, the Orange Elementary School is instructing parents not to park along Kimball when picking up their students because there's not enough access to get there and it is causing a hazard. It's causing a hazard at the most critical time when children are leaving school. Let's get this right. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Uh, Ma'am, and then we'll go to Mr. Anderson and then we'll, we'll take a vote. Monique Walters, 5404 Kimball Avenue. And I would like to reiterate what uh, Mary Margaret said that we do appreciate the city council, the mayor, and our elected officials. Um, it, it has been a very uh, a learning experience going through this process. So I appreciate what you do. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things, some of these are just, I've mentioned them before. One is soil quality, I'm gonna mention it. I know it's a non, a mute issue, but I'm gonna mention it anyway. Um, in 2017, as part of an appraisal process for my family's farm, soil samples were taken. The average soil sample in the state of Iowa is rated between 70 and 72. My family's ground is rated at a 97. And that ground is on adjacent or right up to Mr. Anderson's land, and I can't imagine that his land is no less quality than ours. Um, so again, we're taking not just ground, not just any ground, we're taking rich Iowa soil and we're putting buildings on it. Um, the next thing I'd like to um, mention is the commercial tracks as part of the platting process and I know that's not deci deciding here, but to um, take upon what the other gentleman said about trust, um, we are, we've been told that by the developer that, the, um, that he agreed to turn all of the um, zoning to R1 because he wanted to make it a great neighborhood. And I would hope that between the city and the developer that all of that zoned land is platted R1, not just stated that it's zoned R1, that it is specifically platted R1 and that it is developed as such. The last thing we've heard all about and mayor has reiterated about safety. I don't think we can say it enough that that is really, I think kind of the the bottom line issue is the safety in that area, and it is, as the other gentleman said, it is now a concern, not once we get ramped up. Um, so I guess, as I did before, I would ask that the City Council table this rezoning request to adequately review the traffic study being required by the developer. By tabling this request, the council will undoubtedly show good faith to all its constituents that they desire to make a knowledgeable, prudent decision that builds consensus to favor everyone's interests. Thank you. All right. Mr. Anderson. Well, I'm not going to take five minutes. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to say I'm glad they didn't mix up number 19 and 20 requests. Although I think it might have been easier to get a uh, hog confinement and processing plant out there at this point. Uh, <laughs> Gotta have a little, little lightness here, guys. Uh, is, if somebody wants to pay for a, a study so you don't think uh, they're being tainted with us, you may hire the traffic study and pay them. It's a very expensive deal, and we want things to be right out there too. This, all this stuff has, has gotten more complicated than I thought as far as traffic, safety. I didn't build the school, I didn't build the roads, I didn't plot out uh, all those homes in Orange, which was the same land that they took and built on 30 years ago. We waited 91 years here to do something and a lot of coaxing from city people and others. I would like to keep the land, it is good land, 
We can grow a lot of corn and beans, a lot less headaches for me, probably more profit, but we're into this now and we would like it to be a nice win-win project for everybody and I'd like to be friends and neighbors and not, not antagonist here. I'm just gonna leave you with one statement. Optimism is faith that leads to innovation, to achievement and to prosperity. If we don't let the voices of doom and gloom defeat this. Thank you and uh, hope we move forward. All right, thank you, sir. Council. Madam Clerk. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? I abstained to possible conflict. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, congratulations, sir. We just jumped one hurdle. Um, good dialogue between uh, yourselves and the community as well. So, um, you know, thank you so much for all your efforts and all your conversation. And I'm hoping this dialogue will make for an even greater, greater opportunity moving forward. Um, could someone take 21, please? Mayor. Mr. Shimp. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, number 21 is a motion to approve the application of the State of Iowa Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund to provide financing for the CIP pipelining phase three project in the amount of $1,600,000. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Uh, Question. Yes, sir. Oh, Councilman Shimp, could you finish that motion, please? Approve. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I? He left out and authorize. Uh, oh, and authorize Michelle Wiedner, CFO, to sign and submit the application to the state of Iowa. I apologize. Second. I apologize. All right. That motion has been made with the second. Uh, <laughs> a, a support of nose blowing. Um, so, Madam Clerk. Um. It's uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Mr. Mayor? All right. I'd like a motion to adjourn to executive session. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Um, Mr. City Attorney, are we doing this correctly? Uh, Dave Zeller for uh, City Attorney, and I'm authorized to make the call on this. And pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.5I, excuse me, 1 at J, we are. This has to do with the potential purchase of real estate under the code, and we are authorized to do so. All right, thank you. Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Shim? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank all of you for your patience. Uh, this evening as well. Thank you. Oh.